Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the videos and today I'm going to show you a really interesting game from one of my recent correspondence games. So in this position I was playing as black. Uh, you can see from this position I was up two pawns in this game and uh, I had quite a nice advantage in this game. Uh, and here I wanted to try and stop uh, white's attack here because it was looking a little bit menacing. I didn't like some of the continuations I was seeing so I decided to follow the principle of number one when you're ahead exchange off pieces and number two when you're trying to defend against the attack always look to try and exchange. So here I just decided to take on g5 and there's really nothing that wrong with this move. You know white's, white continues uh, to be ahead in this position but well, I was very surprised to see that the computer after the game said that this move was in fact a blunder. Why is it a blunder? Well, quite simply, I missed a beautiful continuation that would have won me the game. And in actual fact, it's a checkmate in nine in this position, which you probably would be a bit surprised to see. I mean, it doesn't look like black is close to checkmating white's king. It looks as though white's the one that's going to be trying to checkmate Black's King first. But in actual fact, as I say, there is a very nice continuation from this position. So see if you can try and solve it. Although it is checkmate in nine, the reason why it's checkmate in nine, as you'll see here, is because White has to in fact sacrifice all four of his pieces to stop this, uh, this checkmate from occurring. In any case, see if you can try and solve it. It's a very nice continuation, so black to move and checkmate. Okay, so the first move here is the move rook to c e1. So this comes with check. Now there's only one move that white can play here. He has to move his king to b2. It's the only square it can go to. After this, knight to c3. A very, very nice move. So this move in fact takes advantage of the great coordination of black's pieces. So this knight will combine with this uh, rook on b1 and then deliver a check. And this is the idea. After this check happens and the king comes over to the a file, there's no way that white can stop this rook from lifting up to either c5 or even c4 and delivering checkmates on the a file. So, uh, in actual fact, there is nothing that white can do in this position. So here, and this is why there's loads of little delays in checkmate here, this is why the computer now says rook to g1 is the only move <laughs> to try and stop and delay the checkmate. After the rook captures in g1, rook to h1, giving up his other rook. And after that captures, uh, well, I think a nice interesting continuation uh, knight to c6, after which uh, rook captures on c6, bishop to e7, now blocking um, any checkmate along uh, here, uh, but in this position rook to b1 can now be played, the king has to come to a3, it's the only move, rook to c4, threatening checkmate in one on a4, and after bishop to b4, takes, and uh, I think it's quite funny. There's really uh, nearly no moves that White can do here. Uh, he's only got basically um, all of these moves and that's it. So after, let's say, I don't know, the, the pawn comes to h6, uh, you can end the game now with rook to a4 checkmate. A really, really interesting continuation uh, and something that I missed is something that, um, you know, as I say, I shouldn't be too upset with it because, as I say, it was a bit of a difficult uh, mate to spot, but certainly a very interesting uh, line that I did not see in this game. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were able to solve it, unlike me, and I wish you best. good luck with your chess, and see you soon. Take care. Bye.